All right, this is Dave Gagnon. This is the expansion meeting for May 10th, 2017. Our special guest today is Debbie Renna Hines from Ross, Rochester, New York. Debbie, say hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, fantastic, Debbie. Nice to have you. Uh, before we get into um, you know some of the other topics, let's um, let's do a little bit of history uh, on uh, Jim and, and Debbie, and um, you know what you know where did you start your real estate career, and give us a few highlights uh, that led you to the point where uh, you had your first conversation here. Okay, so uh, just a quick background: I was a teacher for twenty five years. Um, I taught in all private and Catholic schools, so I did not have a retirement of any sort. Uh, I was not vested in the New York State retirement because it was all private and Catholic schools. Uh, Jim is uh, by trade a union electrician. And uh, in my 25th year of teaching, I was assaulted by a teacher in the school. And being that it was such a uh, prestigious, the most prestigious school in our area, the headmaster had asked me to drop the charges because that he didn't want it getting out to the public that there was a violent uh, teacher on staff and I refused to do that. So because that it was not a school with a union or any type of a, a teacher association, uh, my job was uh, terminated. My contract was not renewed for the following year, uh, which is, of course, I thought that I was going to be a teacher forever. So I went and searched for another teaching job, but having two master's degrees and 25 years of teaching did not make it very easy for me to find a job. So I thought, geez, let me get my real estate license because that's a pretty easy job. All I have to do is take a class, uh, take a couple of tests, open up doors and say, oh, this is great. Let's write an offer. Well, I found that that wasn't really true. Um, <laughs> the taking the class and the two tests was, but the, uh, the real estate, uh, you know, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. I had been an investor with them in our area for over, there's in our area for over 35 years. So I went into real estate because of my investment background um, and thinking that that was going to be good. Um, I had some great training when I first got into the program and, you know, moving full speed ahead. Uh, let's see, it must have been eight or nine, these eight or nine years ago, I, uh, uh, Keller Williams opened up in our area and we had joined uh, Keller Williams. I actually started out as the first team leader and first person to hop on board when the office opened up. And uh, the team leader position lasted just a very, uh, a very small time for me because I didn't really care for the way that the office was being run and, and kind of what you just said, Dave, it was position was really just to corral agents on an agent leadership council and not really there was never any decisions ever being made so I said you know what I think I just want to go back and sell real estate and um, worked really hard at it uh, got myself a real estate coach uh, my business started to grow and uh, lo and behold you know after a very short period of time uh, became very successful in our area uh, Jim left his position and came to work as part of the team. We have a small team and we grew to be the number one team for Keller Williams in New York State, not including uh, New York City, because of course they're, they're the Wild West out there, separate entity. Um, everything was going along great. We were receiving you know, all sorts of accolades, uh, top agents, top team for New York State, top recruiter in the office, uh, you know, most amount of profit share, and all of a sudden, uh, things started changing in the office. Uh, personal items of mine began to become stolen, and you know, when talking to our OP and the uh, team leader at the time, you know, it seemed like it was falling on deaf ears. And uh, the OP called us in, who happened to be a friend of my husband's since he was 15 years old, and said, "I don't think it's working out with you guys in the office." and we basically said, well, you're changing the model and, you know, we're, we are sticking to the model. We are doing everything that we could. And uh, so even though we were sort of asked to leave, we company and we're told we had 48 hours uh, to separate from the company. So we left and it was, uh, it was extremely overwhelming, but our business uh, did not suffer at all. We, our team sells, you know, 
anywhere between 150 to 200 transactions a year. There's, there's three of us on the team. And uh, we had no other choice because of the short time that we had to get into a new company because at the time I had 40 listings and 40 pending signs out in the community. Um, and the, and the, uh, our broker, our previous broker, wanted every sign taken down immediately. So we went to a, a REMAX office and uh, that turned out to be disastrous. Um, we didn't like the culture of the office. Um, the, the REMAX office model that they chose to present was very different than a lot of the other REMAX offices. Um, and we, uh, we started searching. And it was because of a Facebook post that I found out about EXP. Now, prior to that, um, for the last four years, I, I, I became a real estate coach and trainer. I coach for Craig Proctor. And right before the at KW, I was getting phone calls from Ron Patolsky, Diana Kokoska, this person and that person, asking me to come down to Austin to become one of their coaches, their trainers for bold, for leadership, for group coaching. And, you know, I told them that I was really committed where I was. So I often wonder if that had something to do about it, although it was through Keller Williams that I actually met Craig. So anyway, moving forward, we're at, uh, we're at Remax and it was, uh, you know, our business was still going. Momentum sort of got lost. The team really didn't like it. We weren't coming into the office as much anymore. Uh, leads were still still coming in, you know, left and right. Uh, we were one of the very first people to start using Commissions, Inc. when it was first released by Dwayne Legate, who was a personal friend of mine and my husband's. And um, it, it, I can't say enough about the platform. It's, it's been wonderful. But anyway, we, we didn't, it just wasn't the right fit. So we started thinking, okay, Maybe we should move to another company. Maybe we should go to a small brokerage. Nobody on the team was a broker. I never felt that I wanted to own my own company. So I said, well, maybe I should just get my broker's license real quick and do something. And it was by a post um, by one of my Facebook friends who I'd never met, but that he was also with Keller Williams. And I thought it would be a great connection to have this person in LA in case anybody I knew was going to LA and I often advertise all over the country, so you never know where I could pick up a referral. So Dale, um, Alan Rouse was the person, and I saw he posted this post about, you know, just getting this award about, uh, in Keller Williams, about being like the top producer or something of that nature. And he, uh, he was really excited about it, and of course everybody was congratulating him. And two days later, he posted something that just... Uh, really touched my heart and that he was asked to leave Keller Williams two days later after he received this great accolade. So I sent him a private Facebook message telling him, showing, sharing him my story about what had happened to me. And of course, you know, he had shared what had happened to him and he was asked to leave because that they didn't think he fit into the corporate culture. Well, I said, you know, I, it, it's amazing. It just amazes me that so many people that I personally know, Marnie Bennett, who was number one for KW for several years, uh, my best friend, she was asked to leave. I guess they don't like it when people cap, you know, within two weeks or something like that. But anyway, um, I started watching Dale's post because he was searching for a place and he had posted that he was with EXP. And uh, I looked at Jim and I said, hey, you know, Dale's posting these messages about EXP and maybe I should just, you know, reset, reach out to him. And that's what we did. Uh, Jim and I reached out to Dale and we actually uh, were out in L.A. around, you know, just happened to be out there for a conference. And Dale came and met with us. And uh, between Dale and Chuck Keller and Dave, we, we met you, Dave. We drove halfway. We met in Albany. Uh, to explain the program for us, we thought, you know what, this is this is the perfect solution for the Rena Heinz team. And so we were very happy to jump on board, although, you know, just as leaving Remax and fulfilling our commitment there, you know, they, they charged us $12,000 to leave the company. But uh, business has been great since we've been at EXP. Um, 
we've uh, recruited agents, and uh, we look forward to a, a very successful long time. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We're here to stay, and we just uh, really have uh, been embracing everything that the company has to offer. Thank you so much, Debbie, for sharing for sharing the story. Um, um, I I I just love it, and you know the the ability to you know drive halfway and meet you and Jim and um, uh, I I I love. I mean, I love our cloud office. Um, my favorite part of being part of the company is you know the two live events every year. So, anytime I can get together with you guys um, means the world to me. And uh, um, so, so you made the the move over, um, and so you're a uh, a coach. Uh, before we get into that, um, so I, I think one of the advantages of being a, a guest in this segment is for other top people to know a little bit of you know more about you because we do refer across the country and and all of those things. So, um, would you just share with everyone you know the uh, the size of your team and the success that you've experienced over the last let's say twelve months? So as I said, we have uh, about people. There's okay. So I've had to come out of I guess I call retirement. I actually was not working with buyers or sellers. I was pretty much just being the entrepreneur of the team and growing the team. Um, as well as my coaching. I have uh, three buyer's agents, which um, none of them work with listings. We had a fourth agent, but he just recently left and um, still with EXP, but he's just doing something a little bit different now. Uh, he was the one that did all the listings. So I've had to come out of retirement, so to speak, and um, start working on the listings. Um, Jim, who really is in the background of our business, our marketing, uh, he's been doing all the transactions with sky slope you know any, anything that has to do with the transaction anything to do with the marketing anything that has to do with the lead generating that's what jim does although he is licensed and he actually uh is out there with the buyers now because we have just been so so busy and um i uh i i have um i've been recruiting and i'll talk about that in a minute um, but we, I think this past 12, I mean, we're looking to do 200 transactions. I think for the first quarter of this year, we've done a total combined with what we still had left at Remax and what we have at what we just closed with EXP. I think we're at 56 uh, transactions for the first quarter. So I think we are on track to uh, do our 200 transactions. That's great. And um, so you're also a coach uh, for the Craig Proctor system. Um, would you talk about your coaching business just a little bit? Sure. Um, I've been coaching for a little over four years. I coach anywhere from 85 to 100 people. Um, every month it changes. Every week it changes. I speak to them uh, every other week or um, sometimes in a group coaching session. And I... Um, uh, sometimes we have group coaching and we also uh, travel about every six weeks to go to one of Craig's functions. Um, they're usually in Anaheim or they're in Orlando or Toronto, Toronto, we get to drive to. So that's always, that's always a, a good trip because we don't have to get into a plane. And um, I am extremely proficient in time blocking and I would not be able to run my business success successfully if I were not able to time block uh, everything that I do. So time blocking is extremely huge for me and uh, the business, you know, the business continues to grow. Included in my time blocking, I am, a re I recruit um, anywhere I can. There's, there's, you know, uh, I have learned through coaching and through various things that there are five key things that an entrepreneur or a team leader needs to do for their, for their business and one of them is recruit daily. So if I'm not recruiting for agents daily to join my team, I am now recruiting for people to join EXP the way I did for Keller Williams. It, it's, it's just a daily part of my conversation. Gotcha. And so um, uh, are you time blocking time specifically for that or are you more entrepreneurial about it? 
I would say both. I do time block times where I specifically have lists of agents that I would possibly be recruiting for my team that I will reach out to, that I will meet for a cup of coffee and, um, you know, or speak over the phone because maybe they're not in my area. Uh, when I'm at uh, different events, I will set aside time to meet with certain people that have now expressed an interest in what I'm doing. And so it's, it, it just is a, it's a, there's never a time. Perfect example. Yesterday, my husband and I, oh, we had a, we had a fiasco. I went on a listing appointment in the morning. We're down to one car. Our son's car broke right before his last semester back to college. He's graduating this weekend. I said, thank God I'll get my car back because I gave him my car. I had a listing appointment that Jim drove me to, got the listing, had a buyer appointment, and then went to a closing. Jim was waiting for me. The car broke. It wouldn't start. We tried to jump it, quickly got into the car and, and quickly called up uh, uh, Enterprise and got a rental car. So while we're at the and, – and, and we rent cars often because of traveling. And uh, not very many times can I tell you that the people behind the counter have great customer service, more so than not, they're not very proficient in what they're doing. But yesterday there was this man who, uh, you know, who really just, he had it, he, he got it. He understood customer service, and so I had a great conversation with him. Uh, we exchanged cards, and I told him I would be calling him to set up a time to talk because I thought he would make a great realtor. And uh, I would love the opportunity to show him how he could make anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year with having all the business given to him, which is what I promote. My agents don't have to look for business. My agents make that kind of money because I am providing all the leads for them. They have absolutely no expenses except their fifty dollars a month that they paid at EXP. That's great, Debbie. So, so if I understand you correctly, um, you actually have two distinct agent attraction businesses. One is to grow the Rena Hines team and the other is to grow EXP. Is that right? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So, 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 so let's talk about the team a, a little bit more. I, I, I thought that was a great example. Um, and so um, you focus on uh, being the rainmaker, creating the leads. Um, totally understand that part. Uh, how do you um, act as a rainmaker or a team leader? Um, are you providing you know, scripts and dialogue, training, accountability? Uh, what, what does that look like on a weekly basis? So the five things that I have learned in, in running a team or and actually from my coach that I don't mind sharing this with you, there are five things that I think that are extremely important as a team leader or entrepreneur of a team or any business to do. And that is, number one, the leads are coming into me. And um, it is really important that you, that you cherry pick your leads. And I know that that might sound funny, but you know what? If there's a, if there's a lead that's coming, and, and not necessarily meaning that I take the lead, but if there is, okay, so, you know, most of you don't know very much about the Rochester area, but the average price point is $127,000 because we have the highest taxes in the nation. On a half a million dollar property that we just showed the other day, the taxes are $26,000, which of course, we don't have many of those buyers. We do get them, but we don't have many of those. So um, so if a lead comes in for 500000 cherry picking the leads means that I'm going to give the best leads to the best agents on my team, the agents that I know are following up and that are out there selling and are working their leads. Are you picking your appointments, which really means that you time block, that you don't let the tail wag the dog. So I know in this market that's been a little bit crazier than any other market so far that I've been into, except for back in 2008 before the market crashed, where homes were flying off the market because the interest rates were still low. Um, I know that I have to set time in my schedule to be able to show houses if I have a buyer that I'm working with or that now Jim is working with buyers because we've been forced because of not having enough agents on the team that we've had to go out and start working with buyers again. Not that it's a bad thing, but that we started to do that. So I time block periods of time for that. I also time block 
periods where I am just following up with calls or following up with delete, you know, following up with uh, agents that I've talked to about recruiting. And those I don't veer from. So if somebody called me up and said, hey, Debbie, I need you to come and list at my house. Can you do it tonight? I would tell them no, and I would give them the dates that I can come over to list their house. Um, so I, I guess I don't let the tail wag the dog, which I think so many realtors I have found in my experience will run at the drop of the hat, will miss a birthday party of one of their siblings, will miss their own birthday party while their family is there having fun, will miss one of their children's sports event. And I wanted to make sure that that never happened to me again. So I, like I said, I am really uh, time blocking and I don't, I don't let things veer from that. Um, I don't change anything around. And again, with the market the way it is and knowing you have to get people in as fast as possible or get listings, I have, I have time blocked my evenings for those. And that's when I meet people if I'm not time blocking to follow up. The other thing is you have to know what your marketing is. You need to always know what your market, what your target market audience is, um, where homes are selling going to generate buyers, how you're going to generate sellers, and, and continuously work on that. Training is, is the other part, is that you always have to be training. So while I'm, you know, I'm always getting training, whether it's coming out to EXP or going to some real estate function, whether it be with Craig Proctor or the uh, shareholders meeting and learning and speaking to people or uh, masterminding with other agents across the country, I'm always learning as well. As training my team so I have different time blocks set up during the week for team training um, and even when I'm out of town we have met in the cloud world and my son who also is on our team has often said you know what why don't we just have our team meeting in the cloud world all the time even when we're at home and I laughed and I, I think it's just because he doesn't want to get out of bed in the morning sometimes but but makes it different very easy to continue training your team when you have this cloud world available that you can speak to people you know, in diff when you're in different parts of the country instead of setting up a Skype call and things like that. And, you know, included in that training is follow-up. So here's where Jim comes into place because he watches the leads come in. He sees how many calls are being made. Uh, he follows up with the agents to see if they're calling the leads. And, and then we see how many uh, buyer appointments that they're setting or, for me, how many seller's appointments that I'm setting. So we do have a follow-up system with that. And then of course, the last piece is always recruiting. And as I said, I, I, it's just a daily part of my conversation. If it's not to an agent about joining the team, it's to an agent about joining EXP or, uh, you know, yeah, that's it. Or joining EXP or joining my team. Those are the things I recruit for now. All right, Debbie. And, uh, would you share with us, um, uh, I, I forget how long you've been here. I, I think it's somewhere around six months. Um, yes, yeah, since, since November. Fantastic. And uh, um, w what does your revenue share group look like so far? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I've kind of lost track. I, I, well, I have, um, I think I have eight people in Rochester. We've had a couple of people that have, on our team that have, uh, decided to go out as solo agents, which is great. And we, we love when that happens and we love when they stay at EXP because then I have felt that I've trained somebody in order to go out into the, the real, hello, uh, is, are you still there? Sorry, I got cut off for a second. Um, the, the real world to go out and be a realtor and know that they're representing me and the company that they're with and, and doing it the right way. Um, I have, Three agents now in uh, California uh, that I've recruited to EXP, and uh, one of them I have actually started a small team with, which is the other part of my long-term goals was to start teams in other areas. And, of course, uh, Jim was the one behind this, and he had gone to the uh, expansion team operations when we were in, with Keller Williams, and uh, I could let Jim talk a bit about couldn't find the, the value in what Keller Williams was promoting with EXP, the way that, that the company works about setting up teams and only paying one cap. 
Um, it's something that is a very sustainable goal for me to open up teams in other areas that I don't have to be licensed in by getting agents, providing business for them and getting them going out there. So I do have a small team in San Francisco right now. Um, I also just recruited a person from uh, New York City area outside, like the Westchester County area, well, the Bronx, not really Westchester, but the Bronx. And I just another person signed up from Florida and uh, in conversation with five other people in the Florida area. So we're growing. So our, our rev share is growing, definitely. Well, that's great, Debbie. And so as you're uh, growing your group, um, uh, are you supporting them in their growth? And if so, what does that look like? So, yes, I have uh, pretty much weekly conversations with anybody that I have brought over uh, to EXP as uh, an outside agent, not somebody on my team. Of course, my team, we talk about it all the time. Anytime anybody has a tr great transaction. Oh, I'm sorry about that. My phone. <laughs> Uh, anybody, anytime somebody brings over a, a great transaction, we talk about, um, you know, hey, let me reach out to this person and, um, you know, what was it that you liked about them so that this way we can talk about them joining the team or just joining EXP. Um, and so that's how that works amongst the team, always looking, um, you know, for other agents to bring into the business. I think once the were, you know, the perception in my area is that I have my own brokerage. And, you know, every time somebody calls me and asks me something, I say, wait a second, I'm not the broker. Um, I, I can get you the information that they say, oh, I thought this was your own company. I said, no. And uh, these are by some of the top brokers in the area. And I said, no, but you should probably learn about what your competition is in the area. And I jokingly, because I have really great reports with most of them, and, uh, you know, say, you should learn about your competition because I might be taking some of your agents. So, um, and we laugh and that's it. But then, you know, they, then they get, they get worried. Um, the conversations that I have with the people outside of the area, you know, they know I'm available uh, at any time. I told them evenings is usually the best time for me to talk. But if they have any questions, um, I get in touch with them. And I, and I will tell you that Chuck Keller has been um, just an amazing asset to me because that uh, if I if I need to get a hold of somebody like really, really fast other than you, Dave, I know I can reach out to Chuck and, uh, and, and he's helped me out with so many different things. Fantastic. Um, all right, let me open it up to the uh, group here and uh, see if we have any questions. Jim, do you want to say anything? <laughs> All right. Um, if if anyone has a question, feel free to uh, uh, just chime in there. Um, um, my, my follow-up question for you, Debbie, is, you know, here we are in um, uh, halfway through May. I think your team currently is somewhere around 12 or 15 or so. What is your, your goal for building up your team through the balance of this year? So for my own personal team, I, I hope to have 10 new agents by the end of the year. Um, I just... I been in conversation very strongly with one agent she should be coming on board on friday if all goes well and uh as far as my rev share um i i, I i'm hoping to add an agent or two every month and that's 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 one of my goals if i could more than that that's and uh, but that's what i'm planning on doing right now all right that's great all right um uh, I'll just open it up for um, any last questions here. Hey, yeah. Dave, this is uh, Pat Neeser again. Hey, hey, Pat. Hey, yeah, I had a quick question. I just wanted to ask, um, hey, this is uh, yeah, Pat Neeser here in San Antonio. 
Um, what has uh, what has been uh, the the most successful way for you to uh, attract an agent? Um, well, uh, a couple of different things. I do a lot of Facebook posting. I, I do a lot of, you know, say we're hiring ambitious agents. I think I've had to change my wording around um, a little bit because that the agents that are now looking for job, they're more millennials. And I don't mean to insult anybody inside the room if you are in that millennial age grouping. But I think I've had to change uh, the wording around a little bit to more of, you know, things that attract to millennials. So uh, believe it or not, I get a lot of uh, agents that I reach out to through Facebook. Uh, that would be one. Maybe people that don't even have their license. I'd actually really rather take a new agent than uh, sometimes it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. But uh, I just hired a gal on my team, Susan. She was with another company for 12 years, was a solo agent, but just never seemed to really be flourishing. And she reached out to me through a Facebook post that I put on, and I have a I have a website. It's called Rockstar Agents uh, that talks just about you know becoming a rock star. Uh, Rochester they always abbreviate it for R O C, so it's R O C Star Agents .com If any of you want to look at it, and it just talks a little bit about um, you know uh, having a career in, in real estate and what you could potentially make. So. That is, that is one of my biggest ways. Uh, we've tried putting out ads on Indeed and Craigslist, but uh, they don't work. Although I do use a lot of Craigslist still for my own personal business for real estate and get tons of leads through them. Um, and I know what you're all probably thinking, like Craigslist is dead, and I'm going to tell you it's not. There's just a different way that you have to reach out on Craigslist to people. But I think mostly it's just word of mouth. Um, I have a list of agents, and for example... Uh, my husband and I belong to a, a club, and we Jim was at the club. I was in Florida, and he said, hey, Debbie, do you know this person? And I said, yeah, she's a realtor, isn't she? And he goes, yes, she is. And I was bartending at the club. So I thought to myself, okay, well, she was on my list of people to call because she hasn't done that many transactions because I look up everybody's numbers before I reach out to them. And I called her, and I said, you know, I'd love to have a, an opportunity just to talk with you. And the conversation went something like this. You know, I, I know you've been in business for X amount of years, and I know how many transactions that you've done in those years. My question is to you, with our market being so busy, either you must really like to bartend or you need the money. And that's why you took another job. And that's when she looked at me, got very quiet, and she said, I really need the money. And I, I said to her, well, why is that happening for you in your real estate career? And she says, because no one's ever showed me how to be a realtor. So I think when you can offer these agents that you have training or the company has training um, and that there's support there for them, and for me it's that I can just hand them leads and when I show them my bucket full of over 14,000 leads that have come into my Commission Zinc site, their eyes just kind of go wild. And sometimes for some agents, it can become a little overwhelming. And more importantly than anything, before I even meet with these agents, I have them do a disc. And I explain to them the disc. And I'm very, very good at the disc. And so when I meet with them, I explain. In fact, one girl said to me, oh, my God, I feel like I'm at a palm reading. It's like, you know who I am, and, and you don't even know who I am. And uh, But I think it's really important that you know the disc because there are different ways you have to speak to people, you know, when you're trying to recruit. So I don't know if that answers your question, but um, that's what I got for you. <laughs> yeah, no, very nice. Yeah, thank you so much. That was great. Okay. okay. And, and so, Debbie, <clears throat> there's a big difference for you between um, – and I, I'm going to use the word attraction instead of recruiting, um, uh, just as an EXP word. But um, uh, when you're attracting uh, newer agents or agents doing lower volume, it's specifically to work on the Rena Hines team. You generate leads. You're you're coaching them. You're providing scripts and dialogue and accountability. You are not bringing in a newbie and sending them off to some state broker in a foreign land. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. 
And then when you're talking to folks in other lands, those are people who are more uh, seasoned and entrepreneurial and stand on their own. Is that right? Absolutely correct. Correct. Except for the one girl that was in um, San Francisco, I had actually recruited her uh, to EXP to be with another EXP agent that I had recruited over. I thought that they would be a good fit, um, but it didn't work out well. They're, they're both great people, but they just didn't have the right personality to be working with each other. And she felt kind of then alone on an island, and that's when I said, hey, wait a second, I have an idea. And that's when I said, you know what? I can start running ads in your area. I can start um, even recruiting other agents in your area to build another team and we'll do the leads together. And uh, so it's been working great. She's got expires under contract and we're providing the leads for her and uh, hopefully it'll be very successful. Uh, let me change that. It will be very successful, not hopefully. It will be very successful. That's great, Debbie. Other questions? All right. Is is Jim in in the room also? I think so. I can hear. Hey, Jim. Uh, I've been focusing on Debbie the whole time, and uh, I know you're a key element of that team. Would you um, would you talk a little bit about how you support in the growth efforts uh, of the uh, Rena Hines team? Well, I consider myself a safety net. So what we do it as, as things come up, I'm, I'm there to help anyone, and, and that's people on our team, people recruiting. I meet with people, um, and, and just whatever capacity that helps grow the team. I know that's kind of vague, but it, it all depends on what the need is at that moment. Absolutely fantastic. Um, well, good. Um, let me just open up for one last uh, shot for questions, and then we'll uh, close out this part of the meeting. All right, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Debbie and Jim, for coming in. Greatly appreciate uh, the fact that you selected EXP Realty as your uh, brokerage, and uh, really appreciate you not only growing uh, your business, uh, but sharing um, your tactics, strategies, scripts, and dialogue here. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, well, thanks for having us. We're, we're glad to be here. And um, if any of you have any questions off-site, you know, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. All right. Fantastic. All right, guys, we've got just a few minutes before we wrap up here. Is there uh, any uh, objection or uh, script that you guys would like some help with before we break? Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Uh, I have a quick question about um, people who have multiple entanglements with Keller Williams specifically, and I know you have background there. Um, so I'm speaking with a few people who right now are OP, you know, they, they own part of another market center, they have, so they have all these kind of tie-ins, and part of their stress is just detangling and also the kind of sensitive legal dance that's required. Do you have any scripting that you use around that, or do you just try and stay out of it? Um, well, so so there's different uh, you know different points, right? So if they're an investor in a market center, uh, that's different than them being the operating partner, um, and so you know two different conversations there. So. Uh, what's nice in their system is um, KW assumes that they really control the future of that market center and that if the OP gets out of alignment, they are going to exercise their option to replace the OP and uh, you know all market centers belong to Keller Williams in essence, uh, even though not legally through the franchise system, but that's how they, um, that's how they act. And so if it's someone who's an investor, I always um, you know, recommend to them that they uh, go over their um, operating agreement uh, with their uh, attorney to make sure that they understand the, the best way for them to unravel from it. 
Um, the advice usually is to ask to be. Hey, how are you? Uh, I got I'm doing good. Open mic what here. You Hold on. Let me try to figure out who that is. That's Marco. Close mic. Mic. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so. Um, uh, so if, if it's someone that is an investor, they should do the buyout process uh, independently. Um, I did not do that. So I had 10% of a market center um, uh, that when it was awarded to me, they claimed it was worth $46,000. And so I paid taxes on that as it, as it was issued as an award. And when I told them I was leaving the company, I wanted to sell. Uh, they had in our operating agreement that if I was with the company, they would use one computation. And if I was not with the company, they would use another computation. And so since I told them I was leaving the company, they used a computation that dictated that my value of that market center was now worth $9,600. Um, and uh, so people should um, exit the valuation uh, before saying that they're going anywhere. I've seen a lot of market centers um, now require that you sign a non-compete or a two-year contract that you're going to stay if they're going to buy you out. And that is uh, typically not part of the original uh, operating agreement. And so they, they need to work through their attorney to uphold the original terms and not sign any new terms that would restrict them. Uh, if someone is an OP, right, a little bit more sticky because they need to find uh, an approved replacement or the company will, um, KW, and they need to be moved out. And what I've seen a few times is that the new OP will require of the old OP that they will, um, you know, do a, uh, a two-year non-compete or stay with the market center for a, a couple of years or something like that. Um, so um, each situation is different. Each region provides different advice to a changing of the guard and those kind of things. Um, um, it's really getting into the operating agreement and them getting untangled before they, they make the move over. Now that said, uh, they may have other leverage points, right? So they may have a family member, um, they may have a, uh, a partner of trust that could make the move over today and they could start building something here today while they untangle. Uh, so there's a lot of different tactics that you can leverage there, Jeff. That's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Anything else for today? All right, fantastic. Hey, it's oh. Terry. I have a quick question. Go ahead, Terry. As I'm talking to more and more people, I guess the biggest thing is just trying to get people to actually entertain the idea of sitting down and talking, not necessarily once they hear it. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if that's just, just nature of the business or if there's something that can be said to kind of dangle the carrot a little bit better than what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just looking for any guidance to actually get people to sit down and meet more than, more than I already have. Yeah, so, so what I find with that, typically that becomes a, um, uh, a symptom of not having relationships with those people. And so, um, uh, you know, if, if you are, you know, out with a buyer and you're showing properties, um, um, it becomes very easy to have conversations. I mean, I, I do not list and sell. Uh, I focus on growth. Uh, but my son is um, uh, looking to purchase a home, and I am going to uh, uh, put 100% of my commission dollars towards his closings. And so I've been, you know, going out showing him uh, some properties. Um, and I have uh, five good uh, candidates that I'm working on today out of the uh, 10 homes that we've looked at uh, based on the, uh, uh, the listing agents, right? So... Uh, once you meet someone face to face and you have an interaction with them, uh, I find that very easy and 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 the the best way to get into conversation. And you know, just like I I've always taught, you know, the cats approach: compliment, attract, take away, and schedule. Uh, once you meet someone, complimenting them on how they conduct them themselves is easy. You know. And then it's a conversation. And so um, I, I have found it incredibly easy to get into conversations um, for people that 
I've talked to them about the house. So a couple, you know, uh, they've done uh, uh, accompanied showings. And so those were even easier. But the ones that, you know, were accessed through showing time, it was, you know, the fact that um, I gave them the feedback, I gave them a call. Um, and then a couple days later, I was able to circle back around and use that same, you know, uh, approach in that, um, you know, they, they did a great job. Uh, they're obvious professional in how they presented the property. They did, you know, great job on, on the photo set. You know, thanks for the follow up. It was a great package you put together. Sorry it didn't work out with this buyer. All those kind of things, and um, you know, th then you can get into that kind of conversation. So much harder to do if you're trying to call a hundred people, um, you know, in a day and find someone who's interested, um, because like you know. If, if you got a call today from someone looking to sell you a car, you might say, you know, you're busy and you're not looking for a car. Um, you know, so it's it's having a, a strategy uh, that opens people's uh, minds to whatever the opportunity that you're putting on the table. Okay. Makes sense. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. And, you know, remember, if there was ever an easy way to do attraction, if there was just a magic email, a magic video, um, a magic Facebook post that would easily open up people's um, uh, uh, minds to the concept, and if there was a way to present it that was a very high converting way, the company wouldn't need to have a revenue share program. They wouldn't need any of us, right? They would just have a very smart marketing guy and they would put all the stuff out and all the agents would come over here, right? So the value is the pain point. The reason why we get paid, the reason why we have an unbelievable uh, revenue opportunity to build this company is because it's hard, right? It's personal relationships, it's, it's full contact uh, recruiting, it's face-to-face, -face, it's follow-up, it's dealing with objections, it's taking the no's, it's, it's creating value, um, all that stuff. And that's why there's so much uh, uh, value associated with building this company. So, um, you know, don't, don't look for the easy way. It doesn't exist. And if it did, the company doesn't need us, right? So know that it's a process. Find a process that works well for you. And um, um, and just stick with it. Dave, I've got a question. Sure. So we have a local broker in town um, that is three ninety five a month plus uh, no, it's two ninety five a month plus three ninety five per transaction. Um, trying to attract those agents. A lot of them are are former KWA agents. Just keep running up against. Well, gosh, it's so cheap for me, and I doesn't entirely cost me a thing to be there. What might be some good pain points for them? Would you go to the education? Well, so so what, what I would say, if that is where the conversation goes early, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Right? Gotcha. So, you know, if, if, I'm, if, if I knew I was talking to people you know, and that was the model that they were in, I would want to talk about my strengths first. And so, you know, um, what I always found valuable in attraction conversations is, um, you know, what's, uh, you know, how much volume, uh, how much GCI did you do last year in the last 12 months? And what's your goal this year? And then I always ask this question. No, no, in a perfect world, what's your goal for this year? Because that's different than their goal that they'll tell you. All right, so let's say I did 12 deals last year, maybe, maybe you know, 80,000 GCI. Uh, my goal for this year would be 100. No, no, in a, in a perfect world, what would that goal be? 150,000. Well, great. What's the number one thing stopping you from achieving that goal? They probably don't know where they would try to do it. I'm going to tell you it's one of two things, lead generation or time management, or a third thing, uh, they don't know what to do, right? So there's lacking of education to get to that level. 
So I'm going to ask them the number one thing. I'm going to ask them the number two thing. I'm going to ask them the number three thing. So now I got three things that they're not getting. They don't know what to what to do with it. They don't know how to execute it. Now the question is, if I could show you a plan that would help you get there, is that worth sixteen thousand dollars a year? Okay, I like that. That's great. Yeah, and so that's that's value based conversation, not fact based. Right. So fact base is how much do you pay that broker? Oh, you're going to pay us more. Yeah, but we're really cool. No. How about problem? Problem and solutions. The problem is you have a goal and a desire for a lifestyle that you're unable to achieve with the with the solution that you have today. And so why isn't your broker helping you with that? How much longer are you going to tolerate that? What else are you looking at to change your reality? I would stay in that part of the conversation and not even talk about EXP. Right? Consult with someone first. Right. It seems like I, I'm not even getting the conversation. Yeah. So, so it, it, it may be that you don't have uh, credible value with them. Right. It may be your approach. It may be, you know, what you're starting with, um, you know, but I would say if you can get to a coffee meeting or a lunch meeting, then um, then you have credibility with someone and then you can have a meaningful conversation. Great. Thanks. That really changed my perspective. Absolutely. Glad to help. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. How about we have share stock ownership? Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve. That you know, that's you know, those are the other points, right? But um, you know, with hundred hundred percent companies, you know, uh, if all they want to talk about is how little they pay the broker, and we talk about how much they pay here, without getting into what does the value proposition, the full value proposition, really mean to somebody, um, you know, then um, you're comparing you know apples to oranges, and and the person starting out of the gate saying, I hate oranges. Right. Um, and, um, you know, you need to find uh, find someone who is looking for more than the cheapest way to go. And, you know, what I you know talk about is there are some people who drive a you know 15 year old car with the bumpers falling off and it looks like hell and sounds like hell and may not be fully safe. Um, and, um, you know, they're opposed to a new car and they may even have all the money that it takes to go pay cash for a new car, but it's not in their value um, uh, and it's not how they run their life. Um, and so the fact that I have a shiny new car, um, you know, doesn't matter to them. And so it's finding the right audience and uh, filling the need. There's 1.6 million uh, realtors uh, in the U.S. And um, sometimes it's not about convincing everyone that your solution is the best. It's about finding the people that are uh, looking for other solutions, uh, like Debbie Renna Hines, right? She was in a situation she knew she wanted to change, and she sought it out. Uh, Thirty percent of agents will change brokerages this year. Find those, right? And we'll worry about getting more intimate uh, with the others as we grow. Uh, so that's it for today. Thanks so so much for coming in. Uh, Big thanks to uh, Debbie and Jim for sharing openly. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you guys next week. I'll have another guest in here. Uh, be productive. Let's grow, grow, grow. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks.